Thanks be to God. Keep coming into the church in any way to your pews. Thanks be to God.
Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these the last days has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. And you may extinguish your candles and please be seated. Please hold your candles up so they don't drip wax in the pews. Wait till they're dry, then you may set them on their pews. Parents, watch your children, please. Yeah, I can set that. Yeah, right there. You'll have plenty of light. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all of the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food and to all the animals of the world, the land, all the birds of the air and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
stand. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that, at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff, and with your hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two. The Israelites may pass through it on dry land, but I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. Sing the song of freedom. God has, won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now turned and moved and went around behind them. The column of clouds also leaving the front took up its place behind them. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on the dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptians' force a glance that threw it into a panic. He so clogged the chariots' wheels that they could hardly drive with that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Sing the song of freedom. 
God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, and that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. And the Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea, when the Lord hurled them into its midst. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched through on dry land in the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. And then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Sing the song of freedom. Sing the song of freedom. God has won the victory. God has won the victory. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot. Horse and chariot. Fear and loneliness. Fear and loneliness. Death and emptiness. Death and Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Horse and chariot. Hate and prejudice. Hate and prejudice. Chains and slavery. Horse and chariot are cast into the sea. Let us pray. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor, even in our day. For what you once bestowed on a single person, a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, 
now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader, and a commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not, shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the ones who sows, and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. spring of endless life with joy you shall draw water from the living well of God with joy you shall draw water from the spring of endless life with joy you shall draw water Sing out. 
Almighty ever living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations where they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, these are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, not for your sakes do I act, O house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, and whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities. From all your idols, I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put 
my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
O God, who by the pages of both Testaments instruct and prepare us to celebrate the Paschal Mystery, grant that we may comprehend your mercy so that the gifts we receive from you this night may confirm our hope of the gifts to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may run, render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that he who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through the baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin, for a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him, as to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living in God, in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified, he has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. great proclamation, this great announcement that is made to us uh, through the words of this angel. He's described just as a young man in the gospel. He says, do not be amazed. Do not be amazed. And he reminds us about a desire. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. So this, is the, this is the good news, brothers and sisters. The Lord is alive. And I think we can't announce that too much. We can't hear that too much. It can't be announced to us too many times. It's the, the whole reason we're here this whole evening with many readings and, and many symbols, right? All pointing to this great reality that Jesus is alive. That he came and he actually walked on this very earth and died for us and then rose again. He, this, this great curse, the, the, the great result of sin couldn't contain him, right? And he is alive. He is alive again. So we rejoice. Hallelujah, we say on this, on this great evening. And I think that we as, as human beings, we, we just, we like announcements. We, we want good news to be told to us. Um, if you're like on social media, you'll see like, like and we're engaged, right? That's the thing that gets the most interaction, right? Or we have a new baby. Oh yeah, fantastic, right? We're excited about that. I have a story about that. When, when uh, it was the summer of 2017, and I was home, and I don't remember what we were doing, but all the family was there. And I remember my two sisters were sitting in the kitchen. I was kind of standing next to them. And then my mom came, and I, I could tell she had a picture in her hand. And she went to my two sisters, and she put that picture in front of them. And uh, my sisters started freaking out. Like, what, what is happening? What is going on? So I'm like, well, what is going on? So I went over, and I looked at the picture, and it was a picture of us, the whole family, uh, and it said, plus one, baby McCarty, December. And I was like, what is happening? <laughs> and I did not believe that, <laughs> 100%. And it was like, like hours later, I was like, when is this joke going to end, <laughs> right? My next brother up was 11 at that point, right? So this was, this was shocking to me. And as I was reflecting on, on this homily, I was thinking about how I couldn't have articulated it in that moment, but I think I had a flashback to when I was maybe nine years old, and it was April 1st, and my dad came to me, and he, we had a dog at that time, Jake. Now, Jake was a boy dog, okay? And he, my dad came into my room and got me up. He said, Sam, Sam, you've got to come see. Jake had puppies. And I was, I was at first skeptical, <laughs> 
But I was like, I'm not, not going to see puppies if they're there, right? <laughs> so, so I went, and there's Jake just kind of looking at me. No puppies, as you knew already, right? And then, I just remembered this too. I, I then went and tried to do that to my sister, who's, who was probably six. And I was like, Anna, Jake had puppies. And she's like, Jake can't have puppies. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> But I had that memory as I was reflecting on when my mom says, now we're going to have a baby, right? Like, nope, that's, Jake can't have puppies. <laughs> but here we are six years later, and it hasn't been a joke, right? We, I actually have a brother, right? He's six years old. And, and the announcement in the end, once, once I started to believe it, was a joyful one. And that's exactly the point. And that's the invitation to say, oh, there's this great announcement and at first, I think we can, you can do the same thing that I did. Oh, that, I don't think so. That doesn't seem right, right? Jesus was dead. But my friends, it's good news. It's not a joke. This is real. The good news that we celebrate tonight is that Jesus did die. But my friends, he is risen. to please stand and if I can have Brandon come forward. Brandon is our catechumen this evening. He's uh, been preparing uh, for baptism. Yeah, with your sponsor as well. Thank you. And if I can have the book here. Get the candle. Wonderful. We're moving now into, into our baptismal liturgy. Dear be dearly beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers come to the aid of this, our brother, in his blessed hope, so that as he approaches the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on him all his merciful help. And we'll sing together now the litany of the saints as we process now to our font. Cosmos and Damien, John Chris. 
Attention to the font and bless uh, this water, which will become the, the font on seal for us, new life and baptism. <laughs> o God, who by invisible power accomplish, accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very, very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose Son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look, now we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image, and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, 
may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I will put these questions to you, Brandon. Uh, The renunciation of sin uh, and the profession of faith. Brandon, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Brandon, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brandon, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. You have been enlightened by Christ. Walk always as a child of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your hearts. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. This time we'll relight all of our candles uh, for the renewal of our uh, own baptismal promises. Brandon, you've received the light of Christ. Share it with everyone. Got you covered.
there. So there's a, a, a tradition here at Newman uh, that when we do these renewal of our baptismal promises, uh, there's, there's an ancient tradition that, that we face uh, to the west, which is for, for, us, for most of us to the right, uh, and we renounce Satan facing to the west, okay? And then when we come around and do our, uh, when we proclaim our belief in God, we'll turn to the east. Now the east always symbolizes the, the coming of Christ. So that's the, that's the rising of the sun. Jesus comes from the east. Uh, so when we face the east, that's symbolic of facing Christ. Uh, the west, the, the, the land where the, where the sun dies, it goes down. So that's the, uh, the, the place of death. So if you'll please face with me to the west now. So kind of to the right in our church here. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so, I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Now we turn towards the east. The rising sun, Christ himself, proclaim our belief. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I, I do. do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I, I do. do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. 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 The sprinkling or the reminder once again of our baptism.
this time we have our confirmation. <laughs> so I invite Anna, Reeve, Sarah, and Casey, if you come forward uh, with your sponsors, for your first for your profession of faith. Come right on down and kind of line up here right along the edge. Your sponsor can be just before you or just behind you. That's the word I'm looking for. Brandon, we'll get you in a minute. Yeah, you're coming soon. Anna, Reeve, Sarah, Casey. Of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come forward with your sponsors and in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic, at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the church's unity. I invite you now all together with your card there. I believe believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, proclaims to be revealed by our God. Amen. Reeve, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of this family. Casey, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. Sarah, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. Anna, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the, in the unity of the Holy Spirit you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of his family. Now, Brandon, you can join us. Right front and center, perfect. <clears throat> My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism you have been born again in Christ and you have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now are you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. My dear friends, let us pray to God our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit on these candidates for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their, her their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
for now to our Father in heaven. Bring before him our prayers, our petitions. Our sung response is, O God, hear us, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Callahan, and incoming Bishop Battersby, that the grace of the risen Lord be upon them. We pray to the Lord. For our church, that we radiate the risen life of Jesus Christ in our speech and actions, living confidently as God's beloved daughters and sons. We pray to the Lord. For our newly baptized and those who were received into full communion, that the light of Christ permeate all areas of their lives as they go forth to give witness to Christ in word and deed. We pray to the Lord. For all the baptized, having renewed our baptismal promises, that the joy of Christ's resurrection renew us in living our commitments more deeply and faithfully. We pray to the Lord. For those who have lost faith in the resurrection and Eucharist, that the power of the risen Lord work through us to lead people safely home to him. We pray to the Lord. For those who are grieving, isolated, or coping with severe or terminal illness, that the love of the risen Lord bring assurance and comfort through our service and our prayers. We pray to the Lord. For those who have requested our prayers, for those on our parish prayer list, for Frank Dorman, for whom we offer this Mass, and for our personal silent intentions. We pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, you are good and the source of all that is good. So we come before you with confidence, with trust. We bring to you these prayers that we have spoken and all the prayers of our hearts. We make them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You can be seated and extinguish your candles.
you guys do me a favor? Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night above all, to you laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, Brandon, Reeve, Anna, Sarah, and Casey, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count it among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer you to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. <coughs> Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weigh in our merits, but grant in us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
first a practical and then a, a spiritual note. Uh, before we all receive communion, uh, just after Father and I receive, I'll invite all the um, all those who are just confirmed and, and initiated to come up right where you were before, and you'll receive communion before everyone. So, so your cue is after Father Billy consumes from the chalice, you can all come forward, okay? Um, and just to notice, right, it can be lost in, I think, everything that's happened in this liturgy, but the Eucharist is, is the fulfillment of initiation. Uh, when we receive the Lord, uh, we are transformed into him. And this is true for all of us, right? It's the, this one sacrament of initiation that, that we repeat every day even. Uh, and we come uh, again and again more deeply, uh, um, more and more deep into the, the body of Christ which, which we receive. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just please come and join us downstairs. The, uh, the festivities continue, okay? We have a, a, a great spread down there. Something for everyone. Including so, uh, adult beverages. Yes. <laughs> Even there. those everyone's, yes. <laughs> the choir <Please>. needs it. <laughs> Father, Father needs it. <laughs> please, please do join us. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. 
Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. 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 And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen.